This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. So you've probably heard that Samsung is gearing up to launch their long-awaited foldable Galaxy X smartphone. And I did make a video about this some time ago, but the most popular comment on that video was just, why would I want one? This is a valid point. And if we look at how our existing foldable phones are working out, it's not a crew that even I'd wanna be a part of. You've got this thick sandwich design, a bezel separating the screens and a higher price tag, not to mention, more things that can go wrong. Software that needs to constantly switch modes, a second display, and a hinge, which brings up all sorts of concerns for the phone's longevity. Now, what I did notice from a lot of the comments in that video was that there is some confusion between a foldable device and a flexible device. A foldable phone is just that, a phone with a fold most probably down the middle. For example, what we've seen so far from the likes of ZTE. But a flexible device is really a phone where the display itself can be contorted. So the Samsung Galaxy X, which one is it? We don't actually know. Initial rumors were certain that it'll be a flexible phone, but then later ones indicate it's gonna be the more conservative foldable phone. And we might well be getting both at some point in time, but here's the thing. The real reason I'm actually making this video is that even in this worst case scenario where we get a phone with a fold down the middle, it is not a pointless project. The appeal will not be mainstream, hence the company will also be releasing its usual Galaxy S flagship, but it will have some interesting benefits. Take the ZTE Axon M, which amongst its impracticalities had a lot of cool things it could do only because it had two screens. You can use two full screen apps at the same time, watch two different YouTube videos and more. And if we take a look at some of the patents that Samsung has to do with the Galaxy X, you can see they've got a fair bit more planned. Being able to play games across two screens with the visuals on one and the controls on another, almost reminiscent of a certain console from Nintendo. <clears throat> There's one showing you how you could be reading an article on one display whilst using the other to scroll so your finger doesn't cover what you're trying to read. They've also detailed using the second display to control volume, brightness. And when you think about it this way, this second screen can almost function in a very similar way to the touch bar on Apple's latest MacBook Pros. A set of controls that can be adapted based on what application is open. And I'd be curious to see what kinds of features they could come up with. And let me know in the comments down below if you can think of anything. Let's see who can come up with the most creative idea of what you could do with that second screen. Also, Samsung is a company that has clearly invested a lot of time and money into their phone camera. The setup found on the rear of the S9 Plus is one of the most balanced, reliable camera systems available on a phone. But the selfies that the phone takes are not even close, they're not even on the same level. So by having a foldable phone, you actually have the ability to use this rear dual camera for both the back and the front. And this is not a small benefit. This move would immediately make the phone the best selfie camera available right now. With all sorts of high-end features like full-scale portrait mode, 4K video recording, and Samsung's variable aperture for low-light selfies. And also, whilst folding up your phone will make it thicker, it does mean that you can have a larger display without making it wider or taller. This is crucial for its portability. You see, there is no chance you're gonna be able to fit a non-foldable device with an eight inch display in a pocket. But if it folds, you could. Not to mention the foldable phone that we think Samsung is prepping looks a lot better than the half-baked ZTE phone. The screens go from one edge to another, which would mean that when opened, it would look more or less like one continuous screen, rather than having that bezel in the way. Additionally, the patents show how the phone could be folded a full 360 degrees versus the 180 of the Axon M. So I could see a situation where the phone will auto turn on when you fold it outwards and auto standby when you fold it inwards. Even then, and as I said before, this phone is not gonna be for everyone. It is a niche device, hence why Samsung is reportedly not producing very many of them at all. But at the same time, I hope this video has helped you realize that there are some benefits to having a foldable device and that it's something we can and probably should get excited for. Squarespace is a service that I've been recommending to people for a while now. And so when the company reached out and wanted to sponsor some content, it just made sense. 
Three things that I really like about Squarespace are the templates here are some of the most powerful and yet some of the most simple I've ever used. They're also always getting updated. We've had eight new ones in 2018 alone so far. And also, it just gives you peace of mind. You never need to worry about patching or updating your website or installing new plugins. It is all done for you behind the scenes. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Who's the Boss to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. My name is Aaron. This is Mr. Who's the Boss. And I'll catch you guys next time.